Hello everybody! Let me just turn the music a bit down. Hello everybody! Welcome to CSS Escapism. Turn the mic back on. Uh, hi everybody! Uh, hi to the people in the chat. I see you. Hi Mark. Hi everybody. Uh, hi to everybody that is joining, that is seeing the recording, that is joining us later. Um, yeah, so welcome to CSS Escapism and today we're actually going to do something uh, that I've been thinking about for a very long time. Uh, we're going to talk about circular text. And, well, actually, uh, as I wrote in the des description, uh, this whole concept of circular text is not new. Uh, actually, let's uh, jump into the, to the browser. So, <clears throat> this is actually an article from Chris Cuyer from back uh, in, in two, two, from 2012. Uh, it was updated in 2016, but it, it was really uh, like it's it's 12 years old now, uh, and and yeah, this is the idea of a circular text, just making making a text in a circle. And there was a whole bunch of articles and videos about it over the years, and there is a great article by Jay Tompkins uh, from last year uh, that he uses uh, pretty much the same concept, but with a lot of uh, trig functions that makes our life much easier, uh, which is, this is a great article. Uh, but here's the thing, both uh, Chris and, uh, and Jay, and, and pretty much all of the rest, uh, use the same concept of uh, splitting the text into individual characters, and then rotating these characters around a circle. Um, when it looks great and it works great, but actually, if uh, if we look at this uh, this code pen, uh, and I don't want to mess with uh, Jay's work, but the thing with this method is that it works with monospace uh, monospace fonts, and if I'm not uh, if I'm going to cancel the monospace fonts, uh, we can actually see. Yeah, so we can see the text, uh, the, 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 the letters, the, the characters just go one on top of the other, uh, and it's not, it's not perfect, uh, so it works much better when you use a font family of uh, monospace. And also in, Jay Ar in Jay's article, it talks about uh, the text path, the SVG text path. Uh, well, it's not here, it's here. Uh, and text path with SVG is great, but it actually has pretty much the same problems that it's it's positioning uh, just letters, characters, uh, individual characters on this path. Okay, so it's easier than uh, just placing it yourself, but it's still not perfect. Um, today we're going to talk about a completely different method that you can use any font you want, inclu including cursive, symbols, uh, emojis, and whatever you want. Um, so, how are we going to do it? We're actually going to divide today's uh, 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 live into, into three parts, okay? So, the, the first part, this is what we're going to do in, in the first part. We're going to start with a text, and I'm just, I'm using a lorem ipsum text here. Uh, but we're not going to split this text into characters, we're actually going to split this text into segments. Uh, just individual spans, that, but uh, we don't have... Uh, yeah, I'm just... Mark, I'm just explaining it. Uh, we're not putting uh, 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 just one character in each span, but we're putting just a, a piece of the of the text, so now we can actually move those individual spans uh, uh, in individually. So we can position them absolutely, so they will be in the same place. We're gonna position them in a circle. We're gonna see after we're gonna see in a second everything live in code. Yeah, I'm just explaining what we're going to do, and just so we can see it, let's make this circle a bit bigger. Okay, so now we have each one of these uh, spans that gets a different segment of the of the text, but now we need to to put those, uh, uh, to, to close these gaps. And, and if we look at the, take a closer look at this part, uh, we can see that the gap is much bigger in the outer side of the circle, and it's much smaller, obviously, in the bottom, uh, in the inner side of this circle. So we need to transfer this rectangle, these rectangles, actually, into something like trapezoids, okay? 
And in CSS, if you want to turn something, if you want to cut a triangle into a trapezoid, you use a clip path. But if I will use a clip path, if I will cut it, if I will clip it, so it would look something like that. And I actually, you can see that I'm losing a lot of visual data from the font itself, like this whole part of the T is getting, it's not there anymore. So this is not what we want to do. We don't want to clip it. What we want to do is actually stretch the top part out and shrink the bottom part in. So the end result will be something, oops, the end result will be something like that. Okay, so you can see the difference. I'm not losing any visual data. So now, if I'll do it like that, I can actually put those texts together and I have all of the visual data of the font. So how do I do it? This would be the, the step two. Uh, step one would be to get uh, to something like this, okay? Step two would be to make them, those uh, elements uh, uh, stick together. And step three would be to make it pretty. We're going to talk about colors and images and a lot of things. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's, if you have an idea, by the way, how I'm going to do it, uh, I'm not going to tell you until we get to the second step, but uh, you can write your guess in the, in the chat. So let's dive into the code. Oh, this is not what I want. Yes, this is what I want. Yeah, so we're in code pen. <coughs> And right now I have an empty HTML, just very, very basic uh, CSS, uh, just a basic reset and just uh, color on the body and things to make it in the center. Uh, now, as you've seen, uh, yeah, as you've seen here, what, what we're, we're dealing with a, a large number of spans inside of this uh, text because each character or each uh, segment is actually a span. Uh, so what we, uh, so we, we're going to deal with a large number of elements. And when I deal with a large number of elements, I normally use some kind of SAS loops. Uh, but people seems to don't like it when I use SAS loops from, for some reason. I don't know why, if, if you tell me why, just write in the chat. But so today I'm not going to use, I'm actually not going to use any CSS preprocessor at all. Okay. So it's going to be pure CSS. Uh, but. I do need to write a large number of elements, so I'm going to use a preprocessor in the HTML. Uh, maybe uh, people would like it more. I'm going to use Pug. I'm not a, the biggest fan of Pug, but you know, if, and if you know, don't know Pug, it's very easy. I'm going to show you just the very basic. Uh, if I write like a uh, container, oops, I'm, this is not English, uh, <laughs> con container, so we can actually go here and see the compiled HTML and the compiled HTML is just a div with a class of container uh, because we put a dot in. And if I'll put inside of this container, I'll put uh, like a text. So now if we go to the compiled HTML, you can see we have the container and inside the container we have a text. And it's inside because we, we indented it to, if we put it like this in the same row, so it would be one under the other. But uh, because we put spaces here or a tab it's uh, better to put a tab so you can see it's inside and inside of this text we're gonna put spans so let's put a sp oops a span yeah span okay so now you can see I have a text and I have a span inside of it okay I don't know why you doesn't put it in a different line but never mind so we're going to create a large number of spans. And so I'm going to uh, put like a very simple variable here. Let me just, I have my notes here. Uh, let's call it span count. This is the, the number of span that we're going to generate. And let's start with the number like 24. Uh, we're going to change this number and we're going to see how it looks with less and, and more uh, spans. So now, uh, we can first of all actually we need to use this variable later on so in this text i'm actually going to use a style and i'm going to put the yeah the span count span count so now actually if we're going to go to the compiled html we can see that in the html div the, cl the, the text class excuse me uh, I have the, the style of span count 24, so now I can actually use this custom uh, property because we're going to use a lot of math to, to rotate and move things around. Um, and for the span themselves, let's create another variable. 
let's call it an I. And I'm, I'm actually, let, let's move back to, to what Jay has, has done because I'm actually going to do something uh, pretty similar uh, in terms of uh, HTML. Uh, we can actually see, let's inspect it. Yeah, so this is what, what he generated, just a span of... Uh, oh, and we need to add the area hidden, that's... that's, that's I forgot about it. Uh, yeah, so we have like a class of text, and inside of it there is a lot of spans uh, with, an, with an index, an, an index number that we need to calculate. So we're going to do something very similar to that. Uh, here in the span, I'm actually going to add another style, and this time I'm going to say I... Uh, so it's this variable i, but we're gonna say i plus plus because we want each one have to have a different one. So now, actually, we can go to the inspect right here, and we can see what we generated. We generated a container. You can let's make it bigger. Uh, we generated a container, and inside the container we have a text div, and inside of this text div we have uh, what have I forgotten? I missed something. Oh, var i equals zero, I'm sorry. Yeah, so now let's inspect it and we have in the body, the container, the text, and inside of this text, wow. Oh, okay, so now I have one, I forgot to create the loop, <laughs> obviously. Uh, so let's create this loop, we'll say, why is it like this? Uh, while i is less than the span count, okay, so let's create this span, yeah, okay, so now if I haven't forgot anything, you have the body, the container, the text, yeah, and inside of it I have a lot of spans, and each one of those spans got a custom property from zero to the number, right now we have uh, 24, so it's okay. So this is our HTML. Let's go to the CSS because we want to start see stuff. Uh, have I missed something? Multiple copies? Yeah, multiple copies. Yeah. Uh, sibling count property. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Mark, that that's true. Uh, once the nth syntax, nth child syntax is gonna come to life, and if you're watching this in the future and you already have nth child syntax, I envy you because we are so waiting for it, and it would solve this entire thing that I've just done. We just don't need it, um, but yeah, but it's it's not we're not there yet. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's go and we need to add a few things. We need to add uh, a container. I don't know what I'm going to do with the container. Let's leave it for now. And we have the text, and inside of this text we have the span, right? Now, <coughs> oh, we forgot the the most important thing. Obviously, we need the content. So let's use the same uh, lorem ipsum I've done uh, earlier, uh, but we actually don't need this entire lorem ipsum. Yeah, now we can actually see something on the screen. Uh, let's uh, let's say it's up to here. Yeah, so this is the content of each one of these spans. Okay, so we can actually see these spans right here. I can inspect it. You can see this is one, two, three, and so on and so on. Let's close it. So, um, first of all, the text, we need to give it a width or a size. Um, now, uh, let's say 400 pixels, we're gonna change it in a second, uh, and we'll give it an aspect ratio of one because I want it to be square. Let's, uh, oops, let's see it. Let's add the background color with some opacity. Um, yeah, okay, so this is our our, uh, our text element, uh, this is the, the square that the text is, the, the circle is going to be inside of it. Um, so as for the width, I, I, I want to use this, uh, like, let's say text width, or actually let's say text size, because it's the width and the height, because the aspect ratio is one, so let's use text height. And I'm going to use this variable uh, later on in a few places, so uh, let's say 400 pixels here. So this is just the, the reason. Um, what else do I need to change? I also want to change the font size, um, and and I want the font size, again, for now, let's make it like uh, 80 pixels, and we're going to talk about uh, um, responsiveness in a second. 
Um, oh, one thing I have forgotten, uh, and I, this is the most important thing. If you are doing this thing, this is very, very inaccessible. Uh, screen readers hate these things because if people, if somebody would with a screen reader uh, see this, he would actually hear this text 24 times. So it's very, very important, just like Jay's done, to add an uh, aria uh, hidden of true. I'm, 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 oops, of true. I'm just putting it now because it's very, very important and just don't, don't forget it. Um, yeah, so where are we? Uh, in the text, we're seeing the text. So let's go to the span itself. Uh, I want it to be in one line, obviously, so, uh, let's add a white space of no wrap so it would be one line yeah and actually let's make them a display block so it would be one yeah so this is one beneath the other i don't know why i don't have a scroll here never mind um hmm, okay never mind uh, okay, so this is the white space. Uh, le let's actually see each one of these pens so we can see it. Let's add... Uh, first, let's give them a width. And again, this width, we're going to talk about it uh, in a second because we need to do some math to, to calculate the exact width. But for now, let's do like 60 pixels so we can see it. And uh, let's add an outline. 2 pixel solid red. Yeah, so we can see each one of them. Okay, we have uh, these, uh, oh, because I have an overflow hidden here. This is why uh, I don't have a scroll. Okay, so this is all of these spans that I have, but we want these spans, each one of these spans, like in this demo I've, sh I've shown. Yeah, we want each span to show a different part of the text, right? So how do I do it? Um, let's uh, let's set the, the width also let's say span width and I am just using the width here so let's say 60 pixels and the width is var yeah span width so now I can actually use the text indent uh, to move those text in and out so if I'm using a text indent of let's say uh, uh, 20 pixels so it would move uh, let's say 50 pixels so you can see it would move to the right okay and if i give it a negative value it would move to the left so what i need to do is actually move each one of these text the width of the span so what we're going to do is we're going to do a simple calc of the span width width okay times the I so because the first one is zero and the second one is, is uh, the, the first one is zero the second one is one and so on and so on but we need to multiply it by minus one so now we can actually see that each one of these divs get this different segments of the of the text now we can actually add an overflow hidden oops yeah hidden <laughs> Okay, so now we have each one of those uh, segments. Uh, this obviously don't need to be a display block. It was just for uh, for now. <laughs> this is great. We can actually see uh, this text. Uh, let's uh, put it in position absolute. So this text needs to be uh, position relative. Okay. And I want to rotate these elements as, as we've seen. But I want the, the pivot point of each text to be right here in the top. Okay, so first thing, let's create the, let's set the transform origin. The transform origin is the pivot, the pivot point. Uh, let's say set it to top. And we're going to use a transform. But actually, before the transform, because it's position absolute, so we're going to say that the top is 50%. I want the top, the pivot point, to be right in the center of the text element, right here in the center. Um, so we're going to set it top to 50%, why doesn't it move 50%? Okay, great. And the left, I'm gonna set the left to 50%, but I want to, uh, but I want to take it back half of the width. So let's set a calc of 50% minus uh, var 
span width di oops, divided by two. Yeah, so now the top part, which is the pivot point of those spans, is right in the middle of those in the text. So now let's go, we're going to add a transform, we're going to add a few things. First of all, let's add the rotate. We want to rotate each one, uh, each one of those uh, spans. So how much do we need to rotate it? I actually made uh, something, I made this. Yeah, okay, so let's say that this is our text. Uh, and we want to arrange those uh, those elements in a circle uh, around the text. So, uh, how much do I need to rotate each one of them? It's simple. We have 24 segments, and, and right now I have 24, but it can, can change. So, the slice of each segment, the angle of each one of these segments, is 360 degrees, because we have 360 degrees in the circle, divided by our span count, by the number of, of, the, the, of our elements. So... Uh, and, and the first one, we, uh, we're going to move just the angle. The second one, we're going to move the angle times two. The third one, the angle times three, and so on and so on. So let's move back to our... Yeah, exactly, 300, Mark. Uh, so we're going to do uh, 360 degrees divided by our var span count. Okay, this is why we use those, uh, this uh, variable, this is why we set it here. Okay, times, oops, times var i. So now I have something like, what did I miss? Oh, calc. Yeah, okay, so now I have something like that, and if we'll inspect this, uh, yeah, so you can see that the the first span is this. Uh, oops. The first span is this one, the the one that we set because we didn't set any angle, and then each one le le after that it's just let's make it a bit smaller. Woo, too small. Ah, but it's okay. So you can actually see the each one of these spans right here. Okay, you can actually see it when I hover over them. Okay, let's close it. Let's not. Let's make it bigger again. Okay. Um, so the next thing that we need to do, we're going to going to add a translate on the y-axis because we want to move them up. We're going to want to move them to the edge of the of the circle, and we're actually going to translate them up uh, half the size, fifty percent. But we can't use fifty percent. This is why we use this uh, uh, this text, this variable. So let's say variable. Well, we, again, we need a calc. Oops of this variable divided by two because it's only half of the size so now i have yeah something like that oh oh it's actually it needs to be minus we need to move it up up it's minus okay so now i have something like that so each one of these squares maybe again let's do a, a small inspect so we can see each one of those divs uh you can see this is the first one the second one the third one and so on and so on but now we need to cut those divs so um how do we do it uh did i forget anything before we move to the to the second phase um i have my notes of just a second uh yeah maybe if i forgot something i will uh, i will i would complete it later so okay so how do we bridge those gaps uh, we can actually move those uh instead of minus two let's do minus two and a half maybe just so we can see it Minus, oh, I meant one and a half, sorry. Yeah, okay. Just so we can see it better, but we're going to change it back to two later because we, we need to move it just uh, two. So, how do I do it? Uh, did anybody have an idea in the chat? Um, I don't see any, any, uh, any comments. Okay, so the way we're going to do it is actually by using perspective or... but not really perspective we're going to use force perspective and what is force perspective uh well, let's see uh, if you look force perspective in google you could you can find a lot of images made by very uh, uh smart and creative people uh but the whole concept i, I like those uh, uh 
st- uh, uh, floor paintings. Uh, the whole concept is you look at something from one perspective, but it looks like from a different perspective. And if you really want to learn the science or the, 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 the mathematical things uh, behind it, you can uh, search for the Ames Room. Uh, it's named after the guy that invented it. Uh, you've probably seen these types of rooms. Uh, of people uh, that looks uh, bigger in one side, smaller on a different side. Uh, so if you really want to learn this about first perspective, really go look about uh, Ames rooms. But I'm going to try to explain it in a very, very simple way. Uh, I'm going to try. So take a look at these two squares. Um, yeah, okay, take a look at these two squares. I thought I had a problem with the, with the live right now. Okay, so uh, if I ask you which one of these, uh, if, if I ask you which one of these squares is bigger, I'm guessing that some of you is gonna say that the green one is bigger, which looks kind of uh, okay, but because we don't have any context. But if we'll add context, like if we'll add a floor, so now we can see that the b- that the blue square is actually farther away from us, and you don't know it, but our subconscious actually uh, uh, count the the number of tiles behind it. And we can actually see that it's actually kind of the same size, maybe. And if we change the perspective, if we're going to uh, rotate it, we can see that, yeah, the, the blue square and the green square are actually kind of the same size. But because the green square is closer to us, it looks bigger. Makes perfect sense, right? Uh, and the, the same thing actually goes the other way around. So I have, oops, I have these two squares, okay? And they look pretty much the same size, but if I'll them in context if i add a floor you can see that the pink square is actually farther away from us so it's actually probably bigger and if we rotate it we can actually see oh yeah the the pink square is much much bigger okay and this is the way perspective works things that are closer bigger are, are looks bigger and things that are bigger just looks closer but the way our mind determines if something is bigger or closer is just by the context around it so if we talk about force perspective, uh, let's take a look again at these two squares, okay? Again, they look the same at the same size, but if I put them in context, the, the, the pink square looks bigger. But what if the floor is not real? What if the floor itself is flat? So when we change the perspective, we can see that the floor is flat and those two squares are actually the exact same size and our mind was forced to think that the square is bigger. So this is generally the kind of what we're going to do with our text. We're going to put the, the front side, the, the top side of the text, we're going to put it closer to us so it would look bigger. The bottom side, we're going to move it further away so it would look smaller. Um, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this, uh, this example. Uh, this is uh, j- just to understand what's going on. So this is just like a, an element that I have, uh, you can see an outer element, this uh, dotted line, and I have an inner element inside of it that I can change the angle of it, okay? And you can see that the inner element is a rec- rectangle, right? But if we're gonna look at it straight from, from the middle, it actually looks like it's a trapezoid, right? It looks like it because we change the perspective. But if we're gonna lock the, the perspective in place so it would look at trapezoid, uh, from every direction and this is a great way to create trapezoids in CSS in pure CSS that doesn't lose any of the visual data so you can actually create things like that I create this simple tapered structure so you can see in the right uh, what I did I actually clipped each one of those diff, divs and when you clip in a div so you clip the the background and you clip the the border uh, the the box shadow and everything so you can see this one is clipped but the second one i actually forced them into uh, being each uh, t- to being a trapezoid to a first perspective each one of them to being a trapezoid so you can see that the the pattern continues and we can see all the the box shadow and and so on so yeah working with trapezoid in css like opens a really a whole new uh, world of things that you can do. So back to our code. Uh, This is what we need to do. We need to add a perspective. So let's go to our text. I'm going to add a perspective here. And I've set these three uh, uh, properties in the top because 
we're going to talk about, but these three are actually dependent on one, on one another on how this text is going to look. So let's add a perspective, and again, we're going to add a small perspective right now, let's say 200 pixels. Um, yeah, so now we can go to the, uh, to the transform. We're going to add a rotate on the x-axis, oops, rotate x, uh, let's say zero degrees, because I want to actually show you the rotation. Uh, let's go again, let's do inspect, let's choose one of those text, and I have here, this is rotate x, this is the, 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 the value, and if I start rotating it, you can actually see, oh, I actually forgot a step before that, okay, so, but you can actually see that it's that the gaps are moving back together. But actually, let, let's let's move it back to zero because I have forgotten one thing. I've forgotten about the width of these, uh, of these uh, spans because the width, we need to calculate the, the, this width. Uh, so how, let's, let's go back to the demo I made. So we need to calculate the exact width of each one of these uh, of these spans, so so we can have a perfect circle. So how do I calculate the the, the width uh, uh, according to the angle? So this is actually an isosceles, and the, the for, there is a very simple formula uh, to get the width of the base of an isosceles. The formula is width is the the sine of the alpha, the, the angle divided by two time h. H is this height, okay times two. Um, so actually the width is the span width, the, the, this is what we are looking for. Uh, the angle, we know the angle. H is 50%, right? Uh, so the H times two is actually the text uh, size. So we can actually look at it at span width, look, uh, is uh, sin alpha divided by two times text size. That's great, but the alpha, the, the angle is 360 degrees divided by span count divided by two. So we don't need it, we can actually just use uh, 180 degrees divided by span count time text size, and this is the formula that we're going to use. So let's, uh, uh, yeah, so let's go back and here in the width, we're gonna calculate it, let's, just a second, yeah, let's add a calc, I'm not here, let's add a calc of, uh, we said it's the sin of uh, 180 degrees uh, divided by uh, var span count, okay, and we're going to multiply it by var text size. Let's, uh, okay, so now we can actually see that the, the width of each one of these spans is, uh, is, is, is exact, so we can see that each one of these spans uh, is actually touching, the points are touching it, each other. So now, yeah, we need, when we go to inspect and we're gonna change this, these angles, so now it would look better. Oh, come on, yeah. So, if I push it uh, backwards, you can see that at one point, yeah, it actually touches uh, one another, and this point is at obviously 90 degrees because we actually like created this type of uh, a pipe or, or a hole that we are looking through it and the text is written in the inside of this uh, of this pipe. So let's add a rotate here of minus 90 degrees and we obviously don't need the outline anymore but now uh, yeah we can see that we we have some hairlines uh, this is something that happens in, in, in most browser, in most screens. In some screens you don't, you won't see it, but sometimes in some screens you will. So the easy way out is just the span width that we just calculated. Let's just edit one pixel. Oops, plus one pixel. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> um, let's make the, the text size. Um, so the, the font size obviously sets yeah the, this is the size if i make it bigger it would be bigger yeah and the perspective as we said because we're we're looking through a pipe so if we'll set a smaller perspective it's like i'm moving closer so the text would look bigger if i would set a bigger perspective the text would look smaller and 
these numbers are very dependent on the type of font that you are using. So let's actually, I've, I've actually, I pre-imported, or I'm going to copy a few fonts that we maybe we're going to, I don't know if we're going to try uh, all of them. So it's a couple of, uh, let's wait, wait. There's some uh, display fonts here. Uh, yeah, let's 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 start with lobster. Yeah, so this is uh, lobster. So obviously, lobster. We're gonna uh, we want the perspective to be a bit smaller. We want it to be a bit higher, uh, and we want to set the the font size. Let's say maybe to sixty. But if we have an uh, fifty five. Uh, but if we have, uh, th this is okay if the text size is constant, but most of the time the text size is going to be responsive. So let's say instead of 400px, uh, let's say I want it to be 70vmin. Uh, okay, so now it would, it would be responsive, but the text is going to change according. So we, we will need to set the font size and the perspective uh, as a factor of the text size. So we can either use uh, vmin also here, or we can use just uh, like a calc of this, uh, of this variable times uh, uh, some factor. But uh, we've used vmin, so let's use uh, vmin also. Uh, so mm, five is small, let's try 10. 10 looks great. Perspective, maybe uh, make it a bit smaller, maybe something like that uh, yeah like that so yeah we have a text and yeah and and it's very easy obviously uh to uh, it's it's cursive uh no problem we can also add uh let's go do i have yeah uh we can add emojis and will it work please work <laughs> yeah okay so we can add emojis obviously uh and and symbols and whatever you want because we're not losing any data we're not actually clipping anything we're just taking something and warping it into a circle um and yeah but if i if i uh, uh, instead of lobster let's say i'm gonna use uh let's say permanent marker for example so it's much wider so obviously i will need to set the the font size to a smaller font size and maybe adjust maybe 7.5 uh, and maybe adjust the the perspective according to the type of font you want um, and, and obviously according to the size of the text this remember that these two numbers needs to be a factor of the, of the text size um, yeah uh, any questions by the way I'm, uh, thanks Mark uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, I said the transform origin to the top because I wanted the rotation, the end rotation of this uh, on the x-axis to be on the top, on the top side of this uh, x. So, uh, yeah, we can we can play around with it, but now let's uh, let's make it pretty. Um, I think this is what we want to do now. Um, let's add the overflow hidden on the body. Uh, let's let's use maybe lemon font. Yeah, um, so this font actually needs to be a bit smaller. Let's set it to seven, six and a half. That looks okay. Uh, the perspective looks okay. So let's say I want to color it. Uh, first of all, we need to we can uh, remove this background color. Yeah, we just want the text. Uh, and, and if we, if you still have some sort of uh, of hairlines, you can change this to like two, two pixels or more. But I think one is enough for now. And as for the span count, so I chose 24 because it's just a number. If you choose a lower number, like 12, it would look a bit less. And you can actually see those. You can see the hairlines better, and you can see those uh, strict lines. If I use a very high number like 120 divs so it would look obviously much better it would look cleaner but then we would have 120 divs on the screen now it really depends what you are what you're doing with it with uh, in terms of animation and what else do you have on the screens uh but if it's like just for loading or something yeah so 100 divs it's okay and or if it's static so it's okay um yeah let's let's do like maybe 64 for now somewhere in the middle yeah, it would look great. Um, so, in terms of color, 
Um, so, should, should we do color first or animation first? Let's do animation first because we want things to move. Um, so, uh, actually, you know what? Let's do animation and let's better explain what's going on here. Um, so, let's give the text animation of text. Uh, we're going to make it slow. Uh, infinite, I want it to loop for, for uh, forever, and let's say linear. So now we can set those keyframes, keyframes of text, and let's, um, let's do a simple to rotate on the y-axis one turn. Okay, so I want to rotate it around, this is the y-axis, I want to rotate it around the y-axis one rotation, and we can actually see it rotate, but it doesn't really rotate because while this text has perspective, it doesn't live in a perspective world. Now, if you're not doing anything with perspective, this is okay, but if you're like me and you're, you're working and you're putting something, something like this inside of a, a, an element or a, or a body that has a perspective on it, it would look, uh, it might look a bit weird. So let's, uh, let's go to the container itself, actually. Um, yeah, and let's add a perspective. Actually, you know, instead of that, let's set the perspective on the container. Okay, and because we set the perspective on the container, so right now it disappeared because we don't have any perspective on the text. So once we rotated the, the spans 90 degrees, it disappeared. So we're going to need to add a transform style of preserve 3D. So we're going to preserve the 3D of the of the container to the text, and if I haven't forgot anything, we might see something. Yeah, that looks like this. Uh, let's change the perspective, make it a bit bigger. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually w what's going on. This is what I said. We actually made like a pipe, like a ring of text that we're actually like looking through it. Okay. Thanks. Uh, th this is just a way to explain it, but uh, but if you are living, so le let's keep this perspective here, and we set this perspective there. Oops. So now, oops, we set it to 160. Uh, so now, because we're having two perspective, we might see something a bit weird. Um, Oh yeah. Okay. So now, now we won't see something a bit weird because we commented, uh, because we commented out. Now we might see something a bit weird. Yeah, we can see that it's a bit warping. Uh, it's it's warping because it actually lives in a double perspective world. And if you are working with perspective like me, you can see that in most uh, uh, pr most uh, 3D project I'm doing, I'm setting the perspective and then I'm, I'm forcing each one of the, the childs to have a transform style of preserve 3D. So in the, in, but we want to cancel it out. So I, I'm, I'm normally doing something like, uh, oops, like and here and I'm moving everything like this. Okay, uh, but if you want to cancel it out, what you need to do is actually set the transform style for this uh, for this child to flat. So, so this is just like the demo I've I've shown of this trapezoid. I'm actually forcing it to be flat, so now it's flat in every direction. So now, let's make it a bit faster. Yeah. So now we can rotate those this uh, circle inside a 3D world, and its its own perspective won't, uh, and and the, uh, the perspective of the outside outside world won't affect the perspective that we set here because we set the transform style to flat. So that looks great, uh, but instead of that, let's uh, let's rotate it like maybe rotate it on the Z axis. Yeah, it would look better. Uh, actually, there is something I, I like doing lately. We can set it from, and let's have a transform, uh, rotate from zero degrees, and then rotate on the x-axis, let's say 45 degrees, and then rotate again, uh, 360 degrees. 
it, it's gonna make sense in a second, don't worry. Uh, 360, so now I'm rotating it on the other direction. So what happens now is, oops, this needs to be two, oops. Yeah, so what happens now, the, the text actually is not rotating, it is rotating and then rotating on the x-axis and rotating back. So we, we, we can see it like it's, the top is always in the top, but the bottom is always in the bottom, but we can see different part of it moving forward in each time. And if we do want to rotate it, so all we need to do is just set it to a different number. So we can set something like this. And actually, this we can move, do it much. Uh, we can roll it less on the z-axis, on the x-axis, so it would be a bit softer. That's let, let's leave it like this for now. Um, yeah, and now let's talk about colors. Um, so first of all, I want to talk about colors. So let's make the background color. Uh, a bit lighter. Um, actually, instead of background color, let's make it a background image of uh, radial gradient. We're gonna start with white. Like, we're gonna make it a circle first. We're gonna start with white and we're gonna go to some sort of gray. Um, let's say 100 Vmin. We've used Vmin here before. So, okay, we have a text, right now it's white, we don't want it to be white. So if we want to set the text into any color, it's very easy. All we need to do, let's, let's, um, yeah, let's do it right here in the span, beneath here. Let's, yeah. Uh, I can set the color, let's say red, and now everything is gonna be red, right? Yeah, very simple. Um, and I'm, if I'm, I'm just doing a color, uh, I'm actually can instead of just a solid color, I can use an HSL, and then the HSL can use the I variable that I've set to set the hue. So let's do a simple calc uh, var i um, times let's say two, and uh, let's say uh, hundred percent as the saturation and fifty percent in the lighting, so we can have very vibrant color colors. And yeah, and if this is two, and let's say this is three, so it would change. And if, if we want to set like a real rainbow, what we need to do is do 360 divided by the span count. So it's like, it's pretty much similar to, to the rotate. Uh, okay, so now we have a color and we can also, yeah, uh, we can also use text shadow uh, but I actually don't like it. L let's say the 0.1 EM or something like that. Um, because uh, actually now it looks not bad, not as bad. Um, but if we want to do like, uh, if we want to change it, so b yeah, so we can see those, those lines the, where the where, where the, the spans intersect, so there's there's two shadows, one on top of the other, just for only in half of a pixel, so we can actually see these lines, and I don't like using text shadow here. Uh, instead, we can go, come here to the container, and use a filter of drop shadow, drop shadow, uh, let's say uh, 10 pixels, yeah, let's say one here, I don't know, let's say 10 pixels, 10 pixels, uh, three pixels, and let's say some sort of gray, grayish black. Um, yeah, so I, I think it looks better, uh, but uh, again, uh, using filters might, uh, drop shadow specifically might have had, uh, uh, might cause uh, performance issues, just caution. Um, but if we are using drop shadows, so we can actually use another drop shadow. And we're gonna put this one on zero, zero, let's say this is two, let's get this to four. And then we can have like a black outline or maybe white. Yeah, okay. So that is nice and we can obviously set the color. That's, let's leave it like this for now. Um, so yeah, we can set the color of the of the span, and we can set each span to a different color because each each segment is a different span. So we can use it, but we can also do something else. We can also do. Uh, I'm going to comment it out. 
and we can use a background color. So if I'm going to do a background color of red, <clears throat> for example, I have something like that. So uh, if you want uh, some sort of ring, you can also use it. Uh, I can also take this HSL and uh, put it here uh, if it's uh, if it would look better. Yeah, I, I don't like it. Let's uh, let's not do it. Uh, <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, <coughs> but what we can do in instead of just background color. We can also, let's comment it. We can use background image, and the background image we can use, let's say, a linear gradient. Uh, let's do simple red to blue. Okay, so now I have, come on, okay, now I have this linear gradient. Now I can use a background clip of text. Now, come on. And for it to work, I, I do need to change the color to transparent. So now I have fade inside of this text. And I can even take this HSL and set it here in the red. I'm going to say that it's going to fade to, uh, let's say, white. Oops. Let's say white. Would it look good? Yeah, maybe black. Um... Yeah, so you can actually use any type of gradients in the background image because you know, it's nice and I love background image. Uh, but the nice thing is actually you can use, I'm going to copy it. Uh, let's remove this for a second. Uh, so the background image, oh, we don't need it, actually gets a URL. And <clears throat> there is, a f you can put a URL and you can put an image. I'm going to use an image from... Uh, uh, Lorem Ipsum, uh, uh, Pixum, uh, just a second, Lorem Pixum, I had the link before that, yeah, so if you don't know, it, it's, it's a great website that you can just take this link and just use it as, a, where is my code, here's my code, uh, and just use it inside of, uh, of an image. So if I put it like this, okay, so we can actually already see the image and we can set a specific image because I don't want it to move all the time. Uh, let's say 56. And if you want to see this image, let's say 400 on uh, 200. So if you want to see this image, by the way, we can, uh, you can just copy that URL and this is the image that we're going to use. Uh, and if, if you change the ID, so we're going to get a different image, but let, let's use this one. Um, so yeah, so right now we can already see the background image, but they all start at the same point. What I want to do is I want to, I need to do two things. First, I will need to set the background size. Okay. So the background size right now I have 64 uh, elements. So the background size is 6,400% Oops, on 100%. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, but th this obviously is, uh, it's dependent on the number of elements that I have. So I will use a simple calc here of 100% time var span count. Okay. And the next thing I need to do is obviously to set the background position of the X, just like I, I put the text uh, for each one of those span, I move it backward. So I need to, to do the same thing here. Uh, let's do calc and <coughs> so it's 100% uh, this is the, the the background size um yeah and i need to divide it by calc actually i need to divide it by var span count minus 1 uh times var i and if I haven't forgotten anything, yeah, okay, so we, you can already see the image, and it's kind of stretched out, so let's make it a bit wider here. Uh, okay, it kind of looks okay, we can actually see this image. Uh, if we wanted to replace it, let's, let's do 26, I don't know what's on 26. Um, maybe something more visual, okay, mm, 21, I think I... I 
Uh, well, let's get back to 56. Uh, so now we can actually use now, uh, yeah, the clip path, and we, we may put the color back, and now the, we have the image inside of the text. And again, you can use any image you want, uh, uh, whatever you want. Uh, and seriously, the possibilities from here are kind of endless. You can and obviously you don't need to the, the text to be whole uh, uh, a whole circle you can use it like in a half a circle if you just set the font size to a smaller font size so I just have a half a circle and without the animation yeah uh, so you can absolutely use it any way you want I, I would probably use like a rotate yeah would it be? Yeah, so if you want to do something like that uh, as a headline or as a decoration, you can obviously use it. You can wrap it around uh, call to action buttons uh, as a loader, whatever you want. The, the possibilities are really endless from here on. And you can use any fonts you want, anything you want. And you can create trapezoids with CSS, so you can create tapered structures and whatever. Um, yeah, that's it for me. I think I'm kind of pleased, uh, and I went through everything I wanted to go through. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, I'm uh, still in the chat, and if not, I'm in the in Twitter, or X, excuse me. Uh, and yeah, that's it. So thank you all for joining me. I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, play around with it, and if you are playing around with it and you have like demos, and if you if you are implementing it in your website or something, send me a link. I, I love to see when people actually use and learn things. Um, yeah, so thanks again all for being here, and I hope to see you in the next live. So, bye for now.